Section number zero of The Cubs Are of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ron Altman. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko, translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. Introduction. Illustrations. The decorations and illustrations in this book are meant to show something of Ukrainian art. The artistic instincts of the peasant women find satisfaction largely in the working of embroidery, each district having its own characteristic types of design. One of Shevchenko's favorite fancies was to compare his versification to the work of the girls and women embroidering their designs on their garments. He frequently speaks of himself as embroidering verses, it is a favorite device of Ukrainian bookmakers to decorate their pages with miniature landscapes and little figures. The frontispiece of the present work is a picture of Shevchenko in youth from an original painted by himself. On page 129 we see him as he looked after his return from exile. Life. Born 1811, February 26. Twenty-four years a serf. Nine years a free man. Ten years a prisoner in Siberia. Three and one-half years under police supervision. Died 1861, February 26. INTRODUCTION Nearly twenty years ago, the translator of these poems was sent by the Presbyterian Church as a medical missionary to a newly settled district in Manitoba. A very large proportion of the incoming settlers in this district were Ukrainians. Indeed, it was largely owing to the interest taken in these newcomers that the writer was sent there. It was Mr. John Bodrug who first introduced him to the study of the poems of Shevchenko, and with his help translations of three or four of the poems were made a dozen years ago. Press of other work prevented the following up of this study till last summer, when, with the help of Mr. Sigmund Bishinsky, Translations were made of the other poems here given, and considerable time spent in arriving at an understanding of the spirit of the poems and the nature of the situations described. Then the more formidable task was approached, of trying to carry over not only the thought, but something of the style, spirit, and music of the original, into the English tongue. The spirit of Shevchenko was too independent to suffer him to be much bound by narrow rules of meter and rhyme. The translator has found the same attitude convenient, for when the versification may be varied as desired, it is much easier to preserve the original thoughts intact. The writer's thanks are due for help and advice to Messrs. Arsenich, Voisenko, Rudicek, Ferley, Sluzar, and Stashishin, and especially to Mrs. Bishinsky, and for help with the manuscript to Miss Sarah Livingston. Signed, A. J. H. Who was Taras Shevchenko? How many English-speaking people have heard of Taras Shevchenko? 
What Uncle Tom's Cabin did for the Negroes of the United States of America, the poems of Shevchenko did for the serfs of Russia. They aroused the conscience of the Russian people, and the persecutions suffered by the poet at the hands of the autocracy awakened their sympathy. It was two days after the death of Shevchenko that the Tsar's Hukes appeared granting freedom to the serfs. Possibly the dying poet knew it was coming, and died the happier on that account. But in still another way does this man's figure stand out. In the country called the Ukraine is a nation of between thirty and forty millions of people, having a language of their own, the language in which these poems were composed. This has been, as it were, a nation lost, buried alive, one might say, beneath the power of surrounding empires. They have a terrible history of oppression, alternating with desperate revolts against Polish and Muscovite tyranny. In these poems speaks the struggling soul of a downtrodden people. To our Western folk, reared in happier surroundings, there is a bitter tang about some of them, somewhat like the taste of olives to which one must grow accustomed. The Slavonic temperament, too, is given to melancholy and seems to dwell congenially in an atmosphere misty with tears. But he gravely misreads their literature, who fails to perceive the grim resolve beneath the sorrow. In the struggle of the Ukrainians for freedom, the spirit of this poet, who was born a serf, remains ever their guiding star. End of Introduction Recording by Ron Altman Section 1 of The Koptsar of the Ukraine This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Dominique van der Voorle The Koptsar of the Ukraine by Teres Shevchenko Translated by Alexander Jardin Hunter The Monk It happened sometimes, when a Cossack warrior found his energies failing and his joints growing stiff from much campaigning. He would bethink him of his sins and deeds of blood, these things weighing on his mind, he would decide to spend the remainder of his life in a monastery, but before taking this irrevocable step, he would hold a time of high revel with his old comrades. This poem pictures such an event. At Kiev, in the low country, things happened once that you'll never see. Forevermore it was done, Nevermore twill come. Yet I, my brother, will with hope foregather that this again I'll see, though grief it brings to me. To Kiev in the low country came our brotherhood so free, nor slave nor lord have they, but all in noble garb so gay came splashing forth in mood full glad, with velvet coats the streets are clad. They swagger in silken garments pride, and they, for no one, turn aside. In Kiev, in the low country, all the Cossacks dance in glee. Just like water in pills and tubs, wine pours out mid great hubbubs, wine cellars and bars, with all the barmaids the Cossacks have bought, with their wines and meads. With their heels they stamp, 
and dancing tramp, while the music roars and joyously soars. The people gaze with gladsome eyes, while scholars of the cloister schools, all in silence, bred by rules, look on with wondering surprise. Unhappy scholars, were they free, they would Cossack's dancing be. Who is this by musicians surrounded, to whom the people give fame unbounded, in trousers of velvet red, with a coat that sweeps the road? A Cossack comes, let's weep over his years, for what they've done is cause for tears. But there's life in the old man yet, I trust, for with dancing kicks he spurns the dust, in his short time left with men to mingle, the Cossack sings this tipsy jingle. On the road is a crab, crab, crab. Let us catch it, grab, grab, grab. Girls are suing, jab, jab, jab. Let's dance on trouble, dance on it double, then on will bubble. Already this trouble, we've danced on double, so let's dance on trouble. Dance on it double, then on will bubble. To the cloister of our savior, old gray hair dancing goes. After him his joyous crowd, and all the folk of Kiev so proud, dances he up to the doors. Ho ho, ho ho, he roars. Ye holy monks give greeting, a comrade from the prairie meeting. Opens the sacred door, the Cossack enters in. Again the portal closes, to open no more for him. What a man was there, this old grey hair, who said the world farewell. T'was Simon Paley, a Cossack free, whom trouble could not quell. O oh, in the east the sun climbs high and sets again in the western sky, in narrow cell in monkish gown tramps an old man up and down, then climbs the highest turret there to feast his eyes on Kiev so fair, and sitting on the parapet he yields a while to fond regret, and on he goes to the woodland spring, the belfry near where sweet bells ring. The cooling draw to his mind recalls how hard was life without the walls. Again the monk his cell floor paces, mid the silent walls his life retraces. The sacred book he holds in hand and loudly reads. The old man's mind to Cossack land swiftly speeds. Now holy words do fade away. The monkish cell turns Cossack then. The glorious brotherhood lives again. The grey old captain like an owl peers beneath the monkish cowl. Music dances the city's calls, rattling feathers, Moscow's walls. Over woods and snows his eyes can see the banks of distant Genesee. Upon his soul deep gloom has crept, and thus the monk in sadness wept. Down, down, bow thy head, on thy fleshly craving tread, in the sacred writings read, read, read to the bell, give heed. Thy heart too long has ruled thee, all thy life it's fooled thee. Thy heart to exile let thee, now let it silent be. As all things pass away, so thou shalt pass away. Thus mayest thou know thy lot, mankind remembers not. Though groans the old man's sadness tell, upon his book he quickly fell and tramped and tramped about his cell. He sits again in mood forlorn, wonders why he ever was born. One thing alone he fain would tell, he loves his Ukraine well. For Metins now, the great bell booms, the aged monk his call resumes, for Ukraine now to pray, my good old Paley limps away. End of 
Section 1. Recording by Dominique van der Voorden. Section 2 of the Koptar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Dominique van der Voorden. The Koptar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. The Cossacks. Back somewhere in the middle distance of European history, when the Ukraine was under Polish rule, though ever harassed by the devastating raids of Turks and Tartars, there developed bands of guerrilla fighters in the wild borderland beyond the rapids of the Dnieper. Sometimes fighting against the Tartars, sometimes in alliance with them, they became known by the name Kazakh, a word of uncertain origin. Fierce banditti they were, many of them serfs who had run away from their Polish masters, but they often developed great military power. At times, the Poles succeeded in securing numbers of them as fighters in their army, but when the tyranny of the Polish landlords became intolerable, the so-called registered Cossacks would sometimes join with the free Cossacks of the borderland, which is the meaning of the word Ukraine, and exact terrible vengeance on the Poles. The story of these warlike deeds of the Cossacks has the same significance to the Ukrainian people that the tales of Wallace and Bruce have for the Scotchmen. End of section 2. Recording by Dominique van der Voorde. Section 3 of the Koptar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Dominique van der Voorde. The Koptar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. Hamalaya. Hamalaya is an historical romance. The poet represents one of the excursions of the Zaporozhian Cossacks under the leadership of Hamalaya on Skutari, the Turkish city on the Bosphorus. The Cossacks saved Western Europe from the Tartar and Turkish invasions by fighting the invaders in the land of the barbarian. The poem describes one of these excursions where the Cossacks animated by the desire of revenging themselves on the Turks and freeing their brothers who were lying as captives in Turkish prisons, undertake a perilous trip in small wooden boats over the stormy Black Sea to Skutari, open the prisons, burn the city, and return home with rich spoils and their freed brethren. O oh, breeze, there is none nor do the waters run from our Ukrainian's land. Perhaps in council there they stand to march against the Turk demand. We hear not in this foreign land. Blow winds, blow across the sea, bring tidings of our land so free. Come from the Dnieper's delta low, dry our tears and chase away our woe. Roar in play, thou sea so blue, in yon boats our Cossacks true, their caps above are dimly seen, rescue for us this may mean. Once more we'll hear Ukraina's story, once more the ancient Cossack glory we'll hear before we die. So in Skutari the Cossacks sang, their tears rolled down, their wailing rang, Bosphorus groaned at the Cossack cry, and then he raised his waves on high, and shivering like a great grey bull, his waters roaring far and full, into the black sea's ribs were hurled. 
the sea sent on great Bosphorus cry to where the sands of the delta lie and then the waters of the Dnieper pale in turn took up the mournful tale the father Dnieper rears his crest shakes the foam from off his breast with laughter now aloud he calls to spirits of the forest walls hortessa sister a river deep time it is to wake from sleep brother forest sister river come our children to deliver and now the dnieper is clad with boats the cossack song over the water floats in turkey over there are wealth and riches rare hey hey blue sea play then roar upon the shore bringing with you guests so gay this turkey has in her pockets dollars and ducats we don't come pockets to pick fire and sword will do the trick we mean to free our brothers there the janissary crouches there are pashes on soft couches hey ho foemen where for nothing do we care ours are liberty and glory on they sail a singing the sea to the wind gives heed in foremost boat the helm a guiding brave Hamalaya takes the lead O oh, Hamalaya, our hearts are fainting behold the sea in madness raving don't fear he says these spurting fountains will hide behind the water mountains all slumber in the harem byzantium's paradise scutari sleeps but bosphorus in madness shouts arise awake byzantium it roars and groans awake them not o bosphorus replies the sea in thunder tones if thou dost thou fill thy ribs with sand bury thee in mud change thee to solid land perhaps thou knowest not the guest i bring to break the sultan's rest so the sea insisted for he loved the brave slavonic band and bosphorus desisted while in slumber lay the turkish land the lazy sultan in his harem slept but only in scutari the weary prisoners wept for something they are waiting to god from dungeon praying while the waves go roaring by o oh, loved god of ukraine's land to us in prison stretch thy hand slaves are we a cossack band shame it is now in truth to say shame it will be at judgment day for us from forum tomb to rise and at thy court to the world's surprise show cossack hands in chains strike and kill now the infidels will get their fill death to the unbelievers all how they scream beyond the wall they've heard of Hamalaya's fame scutari maddens at his name strike on he shouts kill and slay to the castle break your way all the guns of scutari roar the foes in frenzy onward pour the cossacks rush with panting breath the janissaries fall in death Hamalaya in scutari dances through the flames in glee to the jail his way he makes through the prison doors he breaks off the feet the fetters takes fly away my bird so gray in the town to share the prey but the falcons trembled nor their fears dissembled so long they had not heard a single christian word night herself was frightened no flames or darkness lightened the old mother could not see how the cossacks pay their fee fear not look ahead to the cossack banquet spread dark over all like a common day and this no little holiday no sneak thieves with Hamalaya to eat their bacon silently without a frying pan let's have a light now burning bright to heaven flame scutari with all its ruined navy byzantium awakes its eyes it opens wide with grinding teeth hastes to its comrade's side 
Byzantium roars and rages, with hands to the shore it reaches, from waters gasping strives to rise, and then with sword in heart it dies. With fires of hell, scutaris burning, bazaars with streams of blood are churning, broad Bosphorus pours in its waves, like blackbirds in a bush, the Cossacks fiercely rush, no living soul escapes, untouched by fire, they the walls down tear, silver and gold in their caps they bear, and load their boats with riches rare. Burns Kutari, ends the fray, the warriors gather and come away, their pipes with burning cinders light, and row their boats through waves flame bright. End of section 3. Recording by Dominique van der Voorde. Section 4 of The Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter Kobzars These are the wandering minstrels of the Ukraine. They play on an instrument called the Kobzar, which somewhat resembles a mandolin. Often in former days they were old prisoners of war, too old to work, so their Turkish captors first blinded them, and then set them at liberty. Wandering among the villages, guided by some little boy, they earn their bread by singing folk songs and hero tales to the accompaniment of the Kobzar. Shevchenko published his book of poems with the title Kobzar. End of section 4《セクション5 of the Kobzar of the Ukraine》This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Garfield de Souza.《The Kobzar of the Ukraine》by Taras Shevchenko。Translated by Alexander Jordan Hunter。The Night。Of Taras. By the road the Kobzar sat, and on his Kobzar played. Around him youths and maidens, like poppy flowers arrayed. So the Kobzar played and sang of many an old, old story, of wars with Russian, Pole, and Tartar, and the ancient Cossack glory. He sang of the wars of Taras brave, of battle fought in the morning early. Of the fallen Cossacks' grass grown grave, till smiles and tears did mingle fairly. Once on a time the hetmans ruled, it comes not back again. In olden days we masters were, this never comes again. These glories of old Cossack lore shall be forgotten nevermore. Ukraine, Ukraine, mother mine, mother mine, when I remember thee, how mournful should I be! What has come of our Cossacks bold, with coats of velvet red? What of freedom by fate foretold, and banners the hetman's led? Whither is it gone? In flames it went. O'er hills and tombs the floods were sent. The hills are wrapped in silence grim. On boundless sea waves ever play. The tombs gleam forth with sadness dim. O'er all the land the foe holds sway. Play on, O sea, hills silent be. Dance, mighty wind, o'er all the land. Weep, Cossack youth, your fate withstand. Now who shall our adviser be? Then out spake Nalaveko, a Cossack bold was he. After him Polioha, like falcon swift, did flee. Out spake Taras Trasello, with bitter words untrue. 
that they trampled on Ukraine, for sure the Poles shall rule. Out spake Darius Trisello, out spake the eagle grey. Rescue for the fate he wrought, well indeed the Poles he taught. Let's make an end of our vow, an end come now to your vow. Arise, my gentle comrades all, upon the Poles with blows we'll fall. Three days of war did the land deliver, from the delta shore to Trubail's river. The fields are covered with dead in course, but very now is the Cossack force. Now the dirty Polish ruler was feeling very jolly, gathered all his lords together for a time of feast and folly. Taurus did his Cossacks gather to have a little talk together. Captains and comrades, my children and brothers, what are we now to do? Our hated foes are feasting. I want advice from you. Let them feast away. It's fine for their health. When the sun descends, all night her counsel lends. The Cossacks will catch them and all of their wealth. The sun reclined beyond the hill. The stars shone out in silence still. Around the poles the Cossack host was gathering like a cloud. So soon the moon stood in the sky when rode the cannon loud. Woke up the Polish lordlings, to run they found no place. Woke up the Polish lordlings, the foe they could not face. The sun beheld the Polish lordlings in heaps all o'er the place. With red serpent on the water, River Alta brings the word that black vultures after slaughter may feast on many a Polish lord. And now the vultures hasten, the mighty dead to waken, Together the Cossacks gather, praise to God to offer. While black vultures scream o'er the copses fight, then the Cossacks sing a hymn to the night. That night of famous story, full of blood and glory, that night that put the Poles to sleep, the while on them their foes did creep. Beyond a stream in open field, a burial mound gleams darkly. Where the Cossack blood was shed, there grows the grass full greenly. On the tomb a raven sits, with hunger sore he screaming, waiting near a Cossack weeps, of days of old he's dreaming. The cobs are seized in sadness, his hands would no longer play. Around him youths and maidens were wiping the tears away. By the path the Kobzar makes his way, to get rid of his grief he starts to play. And now the youngsters are dancing gay, and then he opes his lips to say, Skip off, my children, to some nice warm corner. Of griefs enough, I'll no longer be mourner. To the bar I'll go and find my good wife, and there we'll have the time of our life. For so we'll drink away our woes, and make no end of fun of our foes. End of section 5section 6 of the Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Trax Bangalore www.humanityhelps.me The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko Translated by Alexander Jardin Hunter The Forming of a Life The little Taras was born a serf his first memories are of a mother's love, of the kindness of an elder sister. And, like a musical undertone to all his life, the consciousness of the wonderful beauty of nature. But soon, another power of hideous aspect laid its grasp on the childish soul. It was the knowledge of slavery, 
a grim and horrible thing that was slowly but surely grinding out the lives of his parents and that would surely later reach out for his own. Yet even the system of serfdom may allow a little happiness to a child still too young to work. The little boy had been told that beyond the distant hills were iron pillars holding up the sky. At five years of age, he set out to find these pillars. Some teamsters found him wandering on the steppe and brought him back to his home. But this incident marked the character of the boy as an idealist and a dreamer. Then there was Grandfather John, the brave old man who half a century before had fought in the ranks of the Haidemaki who so nearly broke the Polish power. On a Sunday, the wandering family would listen to the mighty voice ringing out in the little home, telling of ancient battles for freedom. When Taras was seven years of age, he lost his mother. His father was left with six children and thought to improve matters by marrying a widow with three. Thereafter, the miseries increased for little Taras, who was hated by his stepmother. The father lived a few years longer, and to him, Taras owed the knowledge of reading, for though they were serfs and lived in a wretched hovel, the Shevchenkos prided themselves on having retained some elements of culture. Our little hero, however, had a strange passion for drawing and painting and also for singing and found some employment among the drunken painters and church singers of the village. Later, his master tried to make him work but found the lad hopeless for anything but his beloved painting. Finally, he reached Petrograd in the suite of his master's son, where he was apprenticed to a decorator. A famous man came upon a ragged boy sitting on a pail in the royal gardens in the moonlight, drawing a picture of a statue there. This was the beginning of a period of good fortune. The lad was introduced to some of the great men of the capital. His genius was recognized. A famous painter painted a picture that was raffled off for sufficient money to purchase the boy's freedom and he was entered as a student in the academy. End of section 6 Recording by Tracks Bangalore www.humanityhelps.me Section 7 of the Kopsar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Adrian Stevens. The Kopsar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. Nymechka, or the Servant. Prologue. On a Sunday, very early, when fields were clad with mist, a woman's form was bending mid graves by cloud wreaths kissed. Something to her heart she pressed, in accents low the clouds addressed. Oh, you mist and raindrops fine, pity this ragged luck of mine. Hide me here in grassy meadows, bury me beneath thy shadows. Why must I mid sorrow stray? Pray take them with my life away. In gloomy death would be relief, where none might know or see my grief. Yet not alone my life was spent, a father and mother my sin lament. 
nor yet alone is my course to run, for in my arms is my little son. Shall I, then, give to him Christian name, to poverty bind with his mother's shame? This, brother missed, I shall not do, I alone my fault must rue. Thee, sweet son, shall strangers christen, thy mother's eyes with teardrops glisten. Thy very name I may not know, as on through life I lonely go. I, by my sin, rich fortune lost, with thee, my son, to ill fate was tossed. Yet curse me not for evils past, my prayers to heaven shall reach at last. The skies above to my tears shall bend, another fortune to thee I'll send. Through the field she sobbing went, the gentle mist its shelter lent. Her tears were falling the path along, as she softly sang the widow's song. Oh, in the field there is a grave, where the shining grasses wave. There the widow walked apart, bitter sorrow in her heart. Poison herbs in vain she sought, whereby evil spells are wrought. Two little sons in arms she bore, wrapped around in dress she wore, her children to the river carried, in converse with the water tarried. Oh, river, Dunai, gentle river, I my sons to thee deliver. Thou'lt swaddle them and wrap them, thy little waves will lap them, thy yellow sands will cherish them, thy flowing waters nourish them. 1. All by themselves lived an old couple fond, in a nice little grove just by a mill pond, like birds of a feather, just always together. From childhood the two of them fed sheep together, got married, got wealthy, got houses and lands, got a beautiful garden just where the mill stands, an apiary full of beehives like boulders, yet no children were theirs, and death at their shoulders. Who will cheer their passing years? Who will soothe their mortal fears? Who will guard their gathered treasure, in loyal service find his pleasure? Who will be their faithful son, when low their sands of life do run? Hard it is a child to rear, in roofless house, mid want and fear, yet, just as hard mid gathered wealth, when death creeps on with crafty stealth, and one's treasures good at end of life's wandering are for strangers rude for mocking and squandering. 2. One fine Sunday in the bright sunlight, all dressed up in blouses white, the old folks sat on the bench by the door, no cloud in the sky, what could they ask more? All peace and love, it seemed like Eden, yet angels above their hearts might read in, a hidden sorrow, a gloomy mood, like lurking beast in darksome wood, in such a heaven, oh, do you see whatever could the trouble be? I wonder now what ancient sorrow suddenly sprang into their morrow. Was it quarrel of yesterday, choked off, then revived today, or yet some newly sprouted ire, arisen to set their heaven on fire? Perchance they're called to go to God, nor longer dwell on earth's green sod, then who for them on that far way horse and chariot shall array? Anastasia, wife of mine, soon will come our fatal day, who will lay our bones away. God only knows, with me always was that thought, which gloom into my heart has brought, together in years and failing health, for what have we gathered all this wealth? Hold a minute, hearest thou, something cries beyond the gate, tis like a child, let's run, seest aught? I thought something was there. Together they sprang, and to the gate running, then stopped in silence, wandering. Before the stile, a swaddled child, not bound tightly, just wrapped lightly, for it was in summer mild. And the mother, with fond caress, had covered it with her own last dress. In wondering prayer stood our fond old pair. The little thing just seemed to plead, 
in little arms stretch out your greed its prayer in silence all no crying just a little breath its call see stasia what did i tell thee here is fortune and fate for us no longer dwell we in loneliness take it and dress it look at it bless it quick bear it inside to the village i'll ride it's ours to baptize godparents we need for our prize in this world things strangely run there's a fellow that curses his son chases him away from home into lonely lands to roam while other poor creatures with sorrowful features with sweat of their toiling must much money earn the wage of their moiling candles to burn prayers to repeat the saints to entreat for children are none this world is no fun the way things run three their joys do now such numbers reach godfathers and mothers mid lots of others behold they have gathered three pairs of each at even they christen him and mark is the name of him so mark grows and so it goes for the dear old folk it is no joke for they don't know where to go where to set him when to pet him but the year goes and still mark grows yet they care for him you'd scarce tell how just as he were a good milk cow and now a woman young and bright with eyebrows dark and skin so white comes into this blessed place for servant's task she asks with grace what what say we'll take her stasia we'll take her trophimus we are old and little wearies us he's almost grown within a year but yet he'll need more care i fear truly he'll need care and now praise god i've done my share my knees are failing so now you poor thing tell us your wage it is by the year or how whatever you like to give no no it's needful to know it's needful my daughter to count one's wage this you must learn count what you earn this is the proverb who counts not his money hasn't got any but child how will this do you don't know us we don't know you you'll stay with us a few days get acquainted with our ways we'll see you day by day by and by we'll talk of pay is it so daughter very good uncle we invite you into the house and so they to agreement came the young woman seemed always the same cheerful and happy as she'd married a lord who'd buy up villages just at her word she in the house and out doth work from morning light to evening's murk and yet the child is her special care whatever befalls she's the mother there nor monday nor sunday this mother misses to give its bath and its white dresses she plays and sings makes wagons and things and on a holiday plays with it all the day wondering the old folks gaze but to god they give the praise so the servant never rests but the night her spirit tests in her chamber then i ween many a tear she sheds unseen yet none knows nor sees it all but the little mark so small nor knows he why in hours of night his tossings break her slumbers light so from the couch she quickly leaps the coverings o'er his limbs she keeps with sign of cross the child she blesses her gentle care her love confesses each morning mark spreads out his hands to the servant as she stands accepts unknowing a mother's care only to grow is his affair four meantime many a year has rolled many waters to the sea have flowed trouble to the home has come many a tear down the cheek has run poor old stasia in earth they laid hardly old trophim from death they saved the cursed trouble roared so loud and then it went to sleep i trow from the dark woods there she frightened lay peace came back in the home to stay the little mark is farmer now with ox teams great in the fall must go to far crimea to barter there skins for salt and goods more rare the servant and trophimus in counsel wise plans for his marriage now devise 
dared she her thoughts utter, for the Tsar's daughter she'd send in a trice. But the most she could say, while thinking this way, was, Ask Mark's advice. My daughter, we'll ask him, and then we'll affiance him. So they gave him sage advice, and they made decision nice. Soon his grey friends about him stand, he sends them to woo, a stately band. Back they come with towels on shoulder, ere the day is many hours older. The sacred bread they have exchanged, the bargain now is all arranged. They found a maiden in noble dress, a princess true, you well may guess. Such a queen is in this affiance, as with a general might make alliance. Hail, and well done, the old man says, and now let's have no more delays. When the marriage? Where the priest? What about the wedding feast? Who shall take the mother's place? How will miss my Stasius face? The tears along his cheeks do fall, yet a word does the servant's heart pall. Hastily rushing from the room, in chamber near she falls in swoon. The house is silent, the light is dim. The sorrowing servant thinks of him and whispers, Mother, mother, mother. 5. All the week at the wedding cake, young women in crowds both mix and bake. The old man is in wondrous glee, with all the young women dances he. At sweeping the yard he labours hard, or passes by on foot and horseback. He hails to the court, where is no lack of good homebrew. All comers he asks to the marriage, and yet, tis true, he runs around so, you'd not guess from his carriage, though his joy is such a wonderful gift, his old legs are most too heavy to lift. Everywhere is disorder and laughter, within the house and in the yard, from storeroom keg upon keg follows after, workers' voices everywhere heard, they bake, they boil, at sweeping toil, tables and floors they wash them all, and where is the servant who cares not for wage? To Kiev she is gone on pilgrimage. Yes, Anna went. The old man pled. Mark almost wept for her to stay, as mother sit to see him wed. Her call of duty elsewhere lay. No, Mark, such honour must I not take, to sit while you your homage make to parents dear. My mind is clear. A servant must not thy mother be, lest wealthy guests may laugh at thee. Now may God's mercy with thee stay. To all the saints at Kiev I go to pray, but yet again shall I return unto your house if you do not spurn my strength and toil. With pure heart she blessed her mark, and, weeping, passed beyond the gate. Then the wedding blossomed out, work for musicians and the joyous rout of dancing feet, while mead so sweet of fermented honey with spices dashed over the benches and tables splashed. Meanwhile, the servant limps along, hastening on the weary road to Kiev, to the city come she does not rest. Hires to a woman of the town for wages carries water. You see she money, money needs, for prayers to holy Barbara, she water carries, never tarries, and mighty store of pennies saves, then in the Lavra's awesome caves, she seeks the blessed wealth she craves. From St. John she buys a magic cap, for Mark she bears it, and when he wears it, for never a headache need he give air a rap, and then St. Barbara gives her a ring, to her new daughter back to bring, for all the saints she makes prostrations, then home returns, having paid her oblations. She has come back. Fair Kate with Mark makes haste to meet her. Far beyond the gate they greet her. Then into the house they bring her, draw her to the table there, quickly spread with choicest fare. Her news of Kiev they now request, while Kate arranges her couch for rest. Why do they love me? Why this respect? Dear God above me, do they suspect? Nay, that's not so. Tis just goodness, I know. And yet, still the servant her secret kept, 
yet from the hurt of her penance wept. 6. Three times have the waters frozen, thrice thawed at the touch of spring, three times did the servant from Kiev her store of blessings bring, and each time gentle Catherine, as daughter, set her on her way, a fourth time led her by the mounds, where many dear departed lay, then prayed to God for her safe return, for whom in absence her heart would yearn. It was the Sunday of the Virgin. Old Trophimus sat in garments white, on the bench, in wide straw hat, all amid the sunshine bright. Before him, with a little dog, his frolicsome grandson played, the while his little granddaughter was in her mother's garb arrayed. Smiling, he welcomed her as matron, for so at visitors they played. But what did you do with the visitor's cake? Did somebody steal it in the wood? Or perhaps you've simply forgotten to bake? For so they talked in lightsome mood. But see, who comes? Tis their Anna at the door, run old and young, who'll come before. But Anna waits not their welcome wordy. Is Mark at home, or still on journey? He's off on journey long enough, says the old man in accents gruff. With pain the servant sadly saith, Home have I come with failing breath, Nor mid strangers would I wait for death, May I but live my mark to see, For something grievously weighs on me. From little back the children's gifts she takes, There's crosses and amulets, For Irene is of beads a string, And pictures too, And for Carpon a nightingale to sweetly sing, toy horses and a wagon. A fourth time she brings a ring from St. Barbara to Catherine. Next the old man's gift she handles, it's just three holy waxen candles. For Mark and herself she nothing brought. For want of money she nothing brought. For want of strength more funds to earn, half a bun was her wealth on her return. As to how to divide it, let the babes decide it. 7. She enters now the house so sweet, and daughter Catherine bathes her feet, then sets her down to dine in state, but my Anna nor drank nor ate. Catherine, when is our Sunday? After tomorrow's the day, prayers for the dead soon we will need, such as St. Nicholas may heed, then we must an offering pay, for Mark tarries on the way, Perchance somewhere from our vision hid, sickness has taken him, which God forbid. The tears dropped down from the sad old eyes, so wearily did she from the table rise. Katharina, my race is run, all my earthly tasks are done, my powers no longer I command, nor on my feet have strength to stand, and yet, my Kate, how can I die? while in this dear warm home I lie. The sickness harder grows amain, for her the sacred hosts appointed, she's been with holy oils anointed, yet naught relieves her pain. Old Trophim in the courtyard walks a ring, moving like a stricken thing. Catherine, for the sufferer's sake, doth ne'er rest for her eyelids take, and even the owls upon the roof of coming evil tell the proof. The sufferer now, each day, each hour, whispers the question with waning power. Daughter Catherine, is Mark yet here? So struggle I with doubt and fear. Did I but know I'd see him for sure, through all my pain I might endure. 8. Now Mark comes on with the caravan, singing blithely as he can, to the inns he makes no speed, quietly lets the oxen feed. Mark brings home for Catherine precious cloth of substance rich, for father dear a girdle sewn of silk so red, for servant Anne a gold cloth bonnet, to deck her head and kerchief too with white lace on it. For the children are shoes with figs and grapes, there's gifts for all, there's none escapes. For all he brings, red wine so fine, from great old city of Constantine. There's buckets three, 
in each barrel put on and caviar from the river don such gifts he has in his wagon there nor knows the sorrow his loved ones bear on comes mark knows not of worry but he's come give god the glory the gate he opens praising god here's thou catherine ready to meet him already he's come haste to greet him quickly bring him in to me glory to thee my saviour dear all the strength has come from thee and she our father softly said just as if in dream she read the old man the team unyokes lays away the carven yokes kate at her husband strangely looks where's anna catherine i've been careless she's not dead no not dead but very sick and calls for thee on the threshold mark appears standing there as torn by fears but anna whispers be not afraid glory to god whom my fears are laid go forth catherine though i love you well i've something to ask him something to tell from the place fair catherine went while mark his head o'er the servant bent mark look at me look at me well a secret now i have to tell on this faded form set no longer store no servant i nor anna more i am came silence dumb nor yet guessed mark what was to come yet once her eyelids raised into his eyes she deeply gazed mid gathering tears i from thee forgiveness pray i've penance offered day by day all my life to serve another forgive me son of me for i am thy mother she ceased to speak a sudden faintness mark did take it seemed the earth itself did shake he roused and to his mother crept but the mother forever slept end of section seven Section 8 of the Gobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Garfield D'Souza. The Gobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardin Hunter. A Father's Legacy. When Gregory Shevchenko, for this was the father's name, was on his deathbed, he called his family around him and gave his parting bequests. A serf might not indeed sell any of his household goods without permission of his landlord, but he could give them to his relatives, who, of course, were the property of the same landlord. So Gregory Shevchenko distributed his pitiful treasures to the children and to his wife, saying finally, to my son Taras, I give nothing. He will be no common man. Either he will be something very good, or else a great rascal. For him the patrimony will either mean nothing, or will not help any. End of section 8 Section 9 of The Cobs Are of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schampf. The Cobs Are of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. Caucasus. To Jacques de Beaumont. French friend of the Ukrainians who perished in the Circassian War. The Tsars used the Ukrainians as tools in their ambitious projects. A hundred thousand of them perished in the marshes, digging the foundations of Petrograd. As many more died in the attempt to subdue the Circassians, tribes inhabiting the Caucasus Mountains, to the imperial will of the Russian autocrat. The memory of these sufferings was the inspiration of this bitter poem. The text is taken from the prophecy of Jeremiah, 
chapter nine verse one o oh, that my head were the waters and mine eyes a fountain of tears that i might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people beyond the hills are mightier hills cloud mountains o'er them rise red red have flowed their streams and rills their sown with human woes and sighs there long ago in days of old olympus czar the angry jove his wrath did pour on a hero bold on brave prometheus he who strove the fire of heaven to seize for men on mountain side in vulture's den he suffered what no mortal pen may well indite the savage beak of his heart's blood doth daily reek yet the torn heart again revives to triumph o'er its torture strives our souls yield not to grievous ills to freedom march our stubborn wills though waves of trouble o'er us roll the waves move not the steadfast soul our living spirit is not in chains the word of god in glory reigns tis not for us to challenge thee though life rolls on in toil and tears though we thy purpose cannot see we cling to hope mid doubts and fears our cause lies sunk in drunken sleep when will it awaken lord oppressors gloat and patriots weep when wilt strength to us afford so weary then art thou o god canst life to us no longer give thy truth we trust beneath the rod believing in thy strength we live our cause shall rise our freedom rise though tyrants rage to thee alone all nations bow through age on age and yet meantime the streams do flow and ever tinged with blood they go beyond the hills are mightier hills cloud mountains o'er them rise red red have flowed their streams and rills their sown with human woes and sighs look at us in tender-heartedness all in hunger dire and nakedness forging freedom in unhappiness toiling ever without blessedness the bones of soldiers bleaching lie in blood and tears must many die in faith there's widows tears i think to all the czars to give to drink then there's tears of many a maiden falling so soft in the lonely night hot tears of mothers sorrow laden dry tears of fathers in grievous plight not rivers but a sea has flowed a burning sea to all the czars who in triumph rode with their hounds and gamekeepers their dogs and their beaters may glory be to you be glory hills of blue all clad in monstrous chains of frost glory to you ye heroes true with god your labors are not lost fear not to fight you'll win at length for you god's ruth for you is freedom for you is strength and holy truth End of section nine. Section 10 of The Cob Czar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Cob Czar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. To the Circassians our bread and home in your own tongue in tartar words you dare to say nobody gave it you your world is young so far no one has taken it away nobody yet has led you in fetters but we have wisdom in such matters in god's good word we daily read but from dungeons where the prisoners moan to caesar's high exalted throne tis guilt without while the soul's in need to us for wisdom should you come we'll teach you all the tricks of trade good christians we with church and icon all goods even god our own we've made but that house of yours still hurts our eyes if we didn't give it why should you have it 
these ways of yours cause much surprise we never granted the corn you planted the sunlight you should pay for too oh quite uneducated you good christians we no pagans needy sound in the faith not a bit greedy if you in peace would from us learn store of wisdom you would earn with us what great illumination a continent neath our domination siberia great for illustration there's jails and folks yon computation from moldavia to finlandia many tongues but nothing said except for blessings on your head a holy monk here reads the bible tells the story tis no libel of king who stole his neighbour's wife and then the neighbour he robbed of life the king now dwells in paradise such folk among us to heaven rise o oh, you creatures unenlightened be ye not of our dogmas frightened our gentle art of grab will teach a coin to the church and heaven you'll reach whatever is there we can't do the stars we count and the crops we sow the foreigner curse then fill our purse the people selling tis truth i'm telling no niggers we sell i'm not making jokes just common ordinary christian folks no spaniards we may god forbid nor jews that stolen goods have hid so don't you think you'd like to be such law-abiding folks as we End of section 10section 11 of the kobzar of the ukraine this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by larry wilson the kobzar of the ukraine by taras shevchenko translated by alexander jardine hunter to the rich and great is it by the apostles law that ye your brother love hypocrites and chatterers ye are cursed of god above not for your brother's soul you care it's only for his skin the skin from off his back you'd tear some trifling prize to win there's furs for your daughter slippers for your wife and things that you don't utter about your private life end of section eleven Section 12 of The Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. To the Master o oh, wherefore wert thou crucified thou christ the son of god that the word of truth be glorified or that we good folk should scape the rod of avenging wrath by faith confessed meanwhile of thee we make a jest mocking thy love in our conduct's test cathedrals and chapels with icons grand mid smoke of incense lavers stand there before thy pictured presence crowds unwearied make obeisance for spoil for war for slaughter seek their brother's blood to shed they pray and then before thy form so meek the loot of burning towns they lay end of section twelve Recording by Alan Mapstone in Oxford, England. Section 13 of The Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko.
Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter Again Addressing the Circassians The sun on us has shone so bright, we wish to you to give the light, that sun of truth we seek to show, to children blind all in a row. Wonders all to see we'll let you, if in our hands we only get you. Of building jails we'll show the trick, how prisoners gainst their fetters kick. There's knotted whips for stubborn backs, for saucy nations painful racks. In change for your mountains, grand and old, with this instruction we you greet. These are the last things already we hold, the plains and seas beneath our feet. End of section 13section fourteen of the kobzar of the ukraine this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the kobzar of the ukraine by taras shevchenko translated by alexander jardine hunter to jacques de Balmont so they drove thee along my dearest friend for ukrainia didst thou shed that good heart's blood of thine so red our country's hangman shame to think moscovite poison gave thee to drink o oh, friend of mine unforgotten friend ukraine to thee doth welcome send let thy spirit fly with cossacks bold along the shores of dnieper old or ancient tombs hold watch and guard and weep with us in labours hard till i return to meet thee my songs i send to greet thee such songs they are of bitter woe yet ever always these i sow thoughts and songs for ever sowing to the care of winds bestowing gentle winds of ukraine shall bear them like the dew to that dear land of mine to greet my friends so true end of section fourteen section fifteen of the copes are of the ukraine this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Trax, Bangalore, www.humanityhelps.me. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardin Hunter The Meaning of Serfdom Three or four days of every week, the serfs, men and women alike, must labor in their master's fields for naught. What was left of the week, they were granted to earn subsistence for themselves and their families. But that was not the worst. More bitter than labor was the fact that they were not their own, were chattels of their lord, who could sell them at his pleasure or gamble them away at cards. He could beat them too or kill them if he wished without fear, for what advocate would take up the case of a penniless serf against the all-powerful aristocracy. Hideous, too, was the glaring fact that young daughters of the serfs were regarded as the legitimate prey of the landlord and his sons. In these later days, the sins of the fathers have been visited in awful fashion on the descendants of these landlords. But can we wonder that in the writings of a poet whose childhood was poisoned by knowledge of such injustice 
we find evidence of the growing, avenging fury that later was to bring about such awe-inspiring convulsions in human society. Through all of Shevchenko's words, there sounds the great theme of that contrast between the beauty of God's world and the horrors of human cruelty. Quotation, an earthly heaven we had from thee, turned it into hell have we. Quotation closed. End of section 15. Recording by Tracks, Bangalore, www.humanityhelps.me Section 16 of The Kobzar of the Ukraine This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Trax, Bangalore, India. www.humanityhelps.me The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko Translated by Alexander Jardin Hunter To the dead and the living and the unborn countrymen of mine in Ukraine or out of it, my epistle of friendship. This is the national poem of the Ukrainians recited at all their gatherings. I have given the thought and something of the feeling. The music of the original I could not give. It begins like a highland dirge with wailing amphibrax, and there are other measures in it not used in our language. Perhaps some future student may be moved to put this poem in such English form as will give the true impression of the original. The motive of the poem is in part to awaken the conscience of the young educated Ukrainians who, for the sake of gain, were allowing themselves to be used as tools by foreign oppressors. It was dawn, tis evening light, so passes day divine. Again the weary folk and all things earthly take their rest. I alone, remorseful for my country's woes, weep day and night by the thronged crossroads unheeded by all. They see not, they know not, deaf ears, they hear not. They trade old fetters for new and barter righteousness, make nothing of their God. They harness the people with heavy yokes, evil they plough, with evil they sow. What crops will spring? What harvest will you see? Arouse ye. Unnatural ones, children of Herod, look on this calm Eden, your own Ukraine. Bestow on her tender love, mighty in her ruins. Break your fetters, join in brotherhood, seek not in foreign lands. Things that are not, nor yet in heaven, nor in strangers' fields. But in your own house lies your righteousness, your strength and your liberty. In the world is but one Ukraine. Gnaipa, there is only one. But you must off to foreign lands to look for something grand and good. Wealth of goodness and liberty, fraternity and so forth you found and back you brought to Ukraine from places far away a wondrous force of lofty sounding words and nothing more. Shout aloud that God created you for this, to bow the knee to lies, to bend and bend again your spineless backs and skin again your brothers, these ignorant buckwheat farmers. 
try again to ripen crops of truth and light in germany or some other foreign place if one should add all our present misery to the wealth our fathers stole orphaned indeed would Naiper be with all his holy hills for if it should happen that you would never come back or get snuffed out just where you were spawned no children would weep nor mothers lament nor in god's house be heard the story of your shame the sun would not shine on the stench of your filth o'er the clean broad free land nor would the people know what eagles you were nor turn their heads to gaze arouse ye be men for evil days come quickly a people enchained shall tear off their fetters judgment will come Naipa and the hills will speak a hundred rivers flow to the sea with your children's blood nor will there be any to help smoke clouds hide the sun through the ages your sons shall curse you wash yourselves the divine likeness in you defile not with slime befool not your children that they were born to the world to be lordlings the eyes of men untaught see deep deep into your soul poor things they may be yet they know the ass in the lion's skin and they will judge you the foolish will pronounce the doom of the wise part 2 did you but study as you should you would possess your own wisdom and you might creep up to heaven but it is we oh no not we it is i no no not i i have seen it all i know it there is neither heaven nor hell not even god just i and the short fat german nothing more grand my brother you ask me something i don't know ask the german he'll tell you that's the way you learn in foreign lands the german says you are mongols 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 naked children of the golden tamerlane the german says you are slavs 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 ugly offspring of famous ancestors you read the writings of the great slavophils push in among them get on so well that you know all the tongues of the slavonic peoples except your own god help it oh as for that sometime we'll speak our own language when the german shows us how our history too he will explain then we'll be all right it came about finally on the german advice they learned to speak so well that even the mighty german could not understand them not to speak of common folks of what a noise and racket there is harmony and force and music and everything and as for history the epic of a free people what's all this about the poor romans brutus etc and the devil knows what have we not our brutuses and our cockles glorious and never to be forgotten why freedom grew up with us bathed in the dnieper rested her head on our hills the far flung steppes are her garments alas twas in blood she bathed pillowed her head on burial mounds 
on bodies of Cossack freemen, corpses despoiled. But look ye well, read again of that glory, read it word by word, miss not a jot nor tittle, grasp it all, then ask yourselves, who are we, whose sons, of what fathers, by whom and why enchained? Then you shall see who your glorious Brutuses are, slaves, doormats, mud of Moscow, scum of Warsaw, are your lords. Glorious heroes they are. Why are you so proud, sons of unhappy Ukraine, that you go so well under the yoke? Even better you go than your fathers went. Don't brag so much. They just skin you. They rendered out your father's bones. Perhaps you are proud that your brotherhood has defended the faith. You cooked your doughnuts over the fires of burning Turkish towns of Sinope and Trebizond. True for you, and you ate them, and now they pain you, and on your own fields the wily German plants potatoes. You buy them from him, eat them for the good of your health, and praise Cossackery. But with whose blood was the land sprinkled that grew the potatoes? Oh, that's a trifle, so long as it's good for the garden. Very proud you are that we once destroyed Poland. Very true indeed, Poland fell, but fell on top of us. So your fathers shed their blood for Moscow and for Warsaw and left to you their sons, their fetters, and their glory. Part 3 To the very limit has our country come. Her own children crucify her worse than the Poles. How like beer they draw off her righteous blood. They would, you see, enlighten the maternal eyes with everlasting fires. Lead on, the poor blind cripple after the spirit of the age, German fashion. Fine, go ahead, show us the way. Let the old mother learn how to look after such children. Show a way for this instruction. Don't worry, good motherly reward will be. The illusion fades from your greedy eyes. Glory shall you see, such glory as fits the sons of deceitful sires. To study then, my brothers, think and read. Learn from the foreigner, despise not your own. Who forgets his mother, him God will punish. Foreigners will despise him, nor admit him to their homes. His children shall as strangers be, nor shall he find happiness on earth. I weep when I remember the deeds of our fathers, deeds I cannot forget. Heavy on my heart they lie, half my life I'd give, could I forget them. Such is our glory, the glory of Ukraine. So read then that you may see, not in dream, but in vision, all the wrongs that lie beneath yon mighty tombs. Ask then of the martyrs, by whom, when, and for what were they crucified? Embrace then. Brothers mine, the least of your brethren, that your mother may smile again, smile through her tears. Give blessings to your children with hard toilers' hands, with free lips kiss them when they are washed and clad. Forget the shameful past, and the true glory shall live again, the glory of the Ukraine, and clear light of day, not twilight gloom, shall gently shine 
love one another my brothers i pray you i plead end of section 16 recording by tracks bangalore india www.humanityhelps.me Section number 17 of the Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Brianna Childs. Facebook.com slash author Brianna Childs. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Teres Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. Freedom and Friends With his new freedom, Shevchenko finds himself in a different world. Not only does he meet the most brilliant people of the Russian capital, scientists, artists, generals, nobles, are his inmates. Count Tolstoy and Prince and Princess Repnin are his patrons. He is introduced too in Russian or Polish translations, to the great authors of other lands and times, Greece and Rome, Germany and Britain offer him their treasures. To us, it is interesting to know that Byron, Walter Scott, and Shakespeare profoundly influenced him. But a conflict of spirit now faces him. His worldly interests and his judgment advise him to go on with his painting, But strange music seems to ring in his ears. It is the music of his beautiful and suffering Ukraine. Songs seem to come to him from the wind, and he writes them down. They are in the pleasant language of the Ukraine. His Kobzar appears in its first edition with eight poems in 1840. It is like a lightning flash through Russia. Great Russian critics sneered at it saying it was in the language of the swine herds. But the whole Ukraine recognized it as the voice of their suppressed nation. The downtrodden masses of all Russia knew that they had found a spokesman. Shevchenko was now famous, but he had chosen, without knowing it, the way of the cross. End of section 17 Section 18 of the Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. A Dream. This poem was written in 1847 in Siberia. Taken away suddenly from Ukraine, Shevchenko could not forget his motherland. His beloved Ukraine was very far from him, and he longed for her even in his dreams. He describes in the poem a dream which he had about the beauties of the Ukraine, which he had just left, and which he never hoped to see again. The old man of whom he speaks represents the poet himself who knew the miseries of his native land, and who desired to spend the last hours of his life there. O oh, my lofty hills, yet not so lofty, but beautiful ye are, sky blue in the distance, older than old Pereyaslav, or the tombs of Bebla, like those clouds that rest beyond the Dnieper. I walk with quiet step and watch the wonders peeping out, Out of the clouds march silently scarped cliff and bush and solitary tree. White cottages creep forth like children in white garments, playing in the valley's gloom. And far below our gray old Cossack, the Dnieper, sings musically amid the woods. And then beyond the Dnieper, on the hillside, the little Cossack church stands like a chapel with its leaning cross. Long it stands there, gazing waiting for the cossacks from the delta to the dnieper prattles telling all its woe from its green-stained windows like eyes of the dead it peeps as from the tomb dost thou look for restoration expect not such glory 
robbed are thy people for what care the wicked lords for the ancient greek cossack fame and tractamere above the hill scatters its wretched houses like a drunken beggar's bags and there is old manister once a cossack town is that the one that used to be all all is gone as a playground for the kings the land of the zaporogues and the village all all the greedy ones have taken and you hills you permitted it may no one look on you more cursed ones no no not you i curse but our quarrelling generals and the inhuman poles forgive me my lofty ones lofty ones in blue finest in the world and holiest forgive me i pray god for so i love my poor ukraina i might blaspheme the holy god and for her lose my soul on a curve of lofty trectomere a lonely cottage like an orphan stands ready to plunge from off the height to love the Dnieper far below from that house ukraina is seen and all the land of the hetmans beside the house an old grave father sits beyond the river the sun goes down as he sits and looks and sadly thinks alas alas the old man cries fools that lost this land of god the hetman's land his brow with thought is clouded something bitter he would have said but did not much have i wandered in the world in peasant's coat and garb of lord how is it beyond the ural among the kyrgyz tartars good god even there it is better than in our ukraina perhaps because the kyrgyz are not christians much evil thou hast done o christ has changed the people god had made our cossacks lost their foolish heads for truth and the christian faith much blood they shed their own and others and were they better for it bah no they were ten times worse apart from knife and auto de fe they have chained up the people and they kill them oh gentlemen christian gentlemen my grey old man with sorrow beaten ceased and bent his brave old head the evening sun gilded the woods the river and fields were covered with gold Mazeppa's cathedral in whiteness shines, like great Bogdan's tomb is gleaming. The willows bend o'er the road to Kiev, and hide the three brothers' ancient graves. Trubel and Alta, mid the reeds, approach, unite in sisterly embrace. Everything, everything gladdens the eyes, but the heart is sad and will not see. The glowing sun has bade farewell to the dark land the round moon rises with her sister star out they step from behind the clouds and the clouds rejoiced but the old man gazed and his tears rolled down i pray thee merciful god mighty lord heavenly judge suffer me not to perish grant me strength to overcome my woe to live out my life on these sacred hills to glorify thee and rejoice in thy beauty and at last though beaten by the people's sins to be buried on these lofty hills and to abide on them he dried his tears hot tears though not the tears of youth and thought on the blessed years of long ago where was this what and when was it truth or was it dream on what seas have i been sailing the green wood in the twilight the maiden with eyebrows dark the moon at rest among the stars the nightingale on the viburnum whether in silence or in song praising the holy god and all all is in ukraina the old man smiled well it may be you can't avoid the truth so it was they wooed they parted they did not marry she left him to live alone to live out his life the old man was sad again wandered long about the house then prayed to god went in the house to sleep and the moon was swathed in clouds thus in a foreign land i dreamed my dream as if born again to the world in freedom once more 
grant me o god some time in old age perchance to stand again on these stolen hills in a little cottage to bring my heart eaten out with sorrow to rest at last on the hills above the dnieper in the section eighteen section nineteen of the kobzar of the ukraine this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the kobzar of the ukraine by taras shevchenko translated by alexander jardine hunter a triumphal march in eighteen forty five shevchenko was graduated from the imperial academy of arts at petersburg shortly after he travelled to the ukraine purposing to devote his life to the service of his own people his progress was a triumphal march a succession of banquets and popular welcomes and entertainments at the homes of the wealthy at kiev people still remember that the earliest russian civilization had its beginnings in the ukraine there christianity first took root and there were the first russian princes before shevchenko's arrival there was organized at kiev the society of cyril and methodius called after the great apostles of russia and the leading spirits of the society were professors in the university of kiev into this brilliant company shevchenko was welcomed its leaders became his devoted friends a chair of painting in the university was to be established for him most remarkable were the relations between shevchenko and professor kulish kulish was to be married to a great lady a daughter of one of the nobles of the country the poet was invited to the wedding and the bride in her enthusiasm actually kissed his hand this was an astonishing act of condescension towards one who had been a serf but this lady herself afterwards a famous authoress cherished the memory to her dying day shevchenko's saddest experience in the ukraine was when he visited his native village and found his brothers and sisters in serfdom his dream was to earn enough money to purchase their freedom and afterwards to devote his life to the liberation of the peasantry the poem the bondwoman's dream commemorates the poet's meeting with his favourite sister catherine working as a slave his friends thought he should go to italy to perfect himself in painting madame kulish purposed to sell her family jewels to raise sufficient money to send shevchenko to that country her husband who was in the plot told shevchenko that some wealthy person had contributed the money but he must not ask for the donor's name but on returning to kiev from the kulish home a policeman put his hand on the shoulder of the poet painter the bright dream was ended End of section 19section twenty of the cob czar of the ukraine this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the cob czar of the ukraine by taras shebchenko translated by alexander jardine hunter the bondwoman's dream the slave with sickle reaped the wheat then wearily limped among the stocks but not to rest her little son she sought who wakened crying in cool nest among the sheaves his swaddled limbs unwrapped she nourished him then dandling him a moment fell asleep in dreams she saw her little son her johnny grown to man handsome and rich no lonely bachelor but a married man in freedom it seemed no longer the landlord's but his own man and in their own joyous field his wife and he reaped their own wheat their children brought their food the poor thing laughed in her sleep woke up a dream indeed it was she looked at johnny picked him up and swaddled him 
and back to her allotted task sixty stooks her stint perhaps the last of the sixty it was god grant it and god grant this dream of thine may be fulfilled end of section twenty Section 21 of the Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. To the makers of sentimental idols. Did you but know, fine dandy, the people's life of misery, you would not use such pretty phrases, nor give to God such empty praises. At our tears you are laughing, and our sorrows chaffing. Slaves cut in a shady spot, you call it heaven, rot. I lived once in such a shanty, of childhood's tears I shed a plenty in bitter sorrows we were wise home that you call paradise no paradise i call thee little cottage in the wood with the water pure beside thee close by the village rood there my mother bore me singing she tended me my child's heart drank in her pain cottage in the shady dell heaven outside inside hell but slavery there with labour weary nor time for prayer in life so dreary my mother good to her early grave was hurled by sorrows wave on wave the father weeping o'er his young little and naked were we sank neath the weight of fated wrong and died in slavery the children we of home bereft like little mice mong neighbours crept water drawer was i at school my brothers toiled neath landlord's rule for my sisters an evil fate must be though little doves they seemed to me into life as serfs they are born and die they must in that lot forlorn i shudder yet where'er i roam when i think of life in that village home evil doers o oh god are we an earthly heaven we had from thee turned it into hell have we and a second heaven is now our plea gently we live with our brothers now with their lives our fields we plough fields that with their tears are wet and yet what do we know yet it seems as if thou for without thy will should we suffer ill dost thou o father in heaven holy laugh at us the poor and lowly advise with them of noble birth how so cleverly to rule the earth for see the woods their branches waving and there beyond the white pool gleaming and willows o'er the water bending garden of eden it is in sooth but of its deeds enquire the truth this wondrous earth should tell a story of endless joy and praise and glory to thee o god unique and holy unhallowed spot whence praise comes not a world of tears where curses rise to heaven above the hopeless skies End of section 21section 22 of the Cobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. 
All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Garfield D'Souza The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko Translated by Alexander Jardin Hunter Autocrat versus Poet Nicholas I was brought up in the traditions of autocracy and believed in them with all his heart. He hated liberal thought and detested the idea of educating the masses. Tens of thousands of copies of the New Testament and the Psalter were burned by his orders. He said such books were for the priests, not for the common people. Incidentally, it may be remarked that the priest had to teach what he wanted or lose their jobs. To speak against his government, or even to criticize Tsars who reigned hundreds of years before him, was a crime. The little band of dreamers who formed the society of Cyril and Methodius actually hoped to convert this autocrat and secure his assistance in freeing the people. They had visions of a free confederation of Slavonic states after the pattern of the United States of America, but with the Tsar as head. But they sadly misjudged their man. Shechenko had actually spoken impertinently of the autocrat in his poems. He refused to retract. The government really wished to be lenient, if he would only be good and confess that he had done wrong. But Shevchenko was not of those who were willing to admit that black is white. The gloomy autocracy now pronounces his doom, a sort of living death in Siberian barracks. The Tsar added to the sentence, with his own hand, the proviso that he should not be allowed either to write or to paint. End of section 22. Section 23 of The Cod Tsar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The Cod Tsar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Hardeen Hunter. A Poem of Exile. I count in prison the days and nights, and then forget the count. How heavily, O oh Lord, do these days pass, and the years flow after them, quietly they flow, bearing with them good and ill. Everything do they gather, never do they return. You need not plead, your prayers unanswered fall. Mid oozy swamps, among the weeds, year after weary year, how sadly flowed. Much of something have they taken from the dark storehouse of my heart. Borne it quietly to the sea, as quietly as the sea swallowed it. Not gold and silver did they take from me, but good years of mine, freighted with loneliness. Sorrows written on the heart with unseen pen. And a fourth year passes, so gently, so slowly. A fourth book of my imprisonment I start to stitch up, embroidering it with tears of homesickness in a foreign land. Yet such woe tells itself not in words, never, never in the wide world. In far away captivity there are no words, not even tears, just nothingness. Not even God above thee. Nothing is there to see, none with whom to speak, not even desire for life. Yet thou must live. I must. I must. But for what? That I may not lose my soul? My soul is not worth such suffering. Then why must I live on in the world, drag these fetters in my jail? Because perchance my own Ukraine I shall see again. Again I shall pour out my words of sorrow to the green groves and rich meadows. No family have I of my own in all Ukraine, yet the people there are different from these foreigners. I would walk again among the bright villages on the Dnieper's banks and sing my thoughts gentle and sad. Grant me, O God of mercy, that I may live to see again those green meadows, those ancestral tombs. If thou wilt not, grant this, 
yet bear my tears to my ukraine because god i die for her it may be that i shall lie more lightly in foreign soil when sometimes in ukraine they speak of my memory carry my tears then o god of loving kindness or at least send hope into my soul i can think no more with my poor head for coldness of death comes on me when i think that they may bury me in foreign soil and bury my thoughts with me and none tell about me in the ukraine and yet it may be that gently through the years my tear-embroidered songs shall fly some time and fall as dew upon the ground on the tender heart of youth and youth shall not assent and weep for me making mention of me in its prayers well as it will be so it will be perhaps twill swim perhaps twill wade yet even if they crucify me for it i'll still write my verses end of section twenty three Section 24 of the Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Garfield D'Souza. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardin Hunter. Siberian Exile. Nowadays, we have many discussions and searchings of heart over the question of prisons and the purpose of punishment. I doubt if the autocracy suffered many qualms of conscience in such matters. It was simply an affair of silencing a dangerous voice and disciplining an unruly subject. They were too humane to put him to death. They merely sought to crush his spirit. But the Slav spirit is hard to crush. It may brood and smoulder long, but some time or other it will burst out in flames. In the case of Shevchenko, another influence may be seen at work. In his ragged youth, when acting as assistant to a drunken church singer, he gained at least one thing. There was a familiarity with the Psalter and the Hebrew prophets. The deep religious fire of the Hebrew seems fused with his own irrepressible native genius to form a spirit that could not be subdued. They tried to make a soldier of him, but he could not, or would not, learn the tricks of the soldier's trade. They forbade him to write, but he wrote verses secretly and concealed them. Occasionally, a humane commander would relax the severity of the rules. One governor allowed him as a hidden favour the reading of the Bible and Shakespeare. At another time, he was taken with a scientific expedition to the Sea of Aral, and employed in the congenial task of painting the wild scenery of that part. At other times again, the severity would be redoubled, and pen, ink and paper would be forbidden. Through it all, his love and sorrow for his native land increased. Only the remembrance of Ukraine kept him alive. Ten years of Siberia changed a gay young artist of bright eyes and abundant locks to a grey-bearded, bald-headed old man on whom death had set his seal. But his spirit was still unconquered. At the end of his imprisonment, he wrote the Goddess of Fame and the Hymn of the Nuns to show it. End of section 24 Section 25 of The Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. Memories of Freedom Memories of freedom bring sweet sadness to the exile's heart, and so, lost liberty of mine, I dream of thee. Never hast thou seemed to me so fresh and young, and so surpassing fair, as now in this foreign land. Alas, alas, 
freedom that i sang away look at me from o'er the dnieper smile at me from there and thou my only love risest o'er the sea so far in the mist thy face appears like the evening star with thee my only one thou bring'st my youthful years before me like a sea hamlets fair in broad array cherry orchards joyous crowds this the village this the people who once as brothers welcomed me mother dear old mother home of memories fond happy guests of days gone by who gathered there in days gone by simply to dance in the good old way from evening light till dawn do sunburned youth and happy maidenhood still dance in the dear old home and thou sweet heart of mine thou heart cease of mine my sacred dark-eyed one still amongst them dost thou walk silent and proud and with those blue-black eyes still doth bewitch the people's souls still as of old do they admire in vain thy supple form goddess mine fate of mine how we maidens gather round thee chirping and prattling in the good old way perchance unwittingly the children remember me one makes a little jest of me smile my heart just a little little smile that no one sees that's all i worse luck must pray to god in jail end of section twenty five Section 26 of the Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter Memories of an Exile Memories of mine, memories of home, Sole wealth of mine, where'er I roam, When sorrows lower in evil hour, And griefs o'ertake me, you'll not forsake me, from the land of my early loves you will fly like grey-winged doves from broad dnieper's shore o'er the steps to soar here the kyrgyz tartars dwell naked in poverty they're wretched as martyrs yet this is their liberty to God they may pray, and none say them nay. Will you but fly to meet me? With gentle words I'll greet ye. Of my heart, ye children dear, O'er past loves, we'll shed a tear. End of section 26《ซ็กชันทวนตี้เซว the Kubzar of the Ukraine》This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson.《The Kubzar of the Ukraine》by Taras Shevchenko, translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. Death of the Soul. As the nights pass, so pass the days. The year itself passes. Again I hear the rustling of autumn leaves. The light of the eyes is fading. Memory is in the heart asleep. Everything sleeps, and I know not if I live or am already dead. For so aimless I wander in the world, no longer weep nor laugh. Fate, where art thou? Fate, where art thou? There's none of any sort. 
Dost grudge me good fate, O God, then send it bad as bad. Leave me not to a walking sleep with heart like bears in wintry den, nor yet like rotten log on earth to lie, but give me to live with the heart to live and love the people, if you won't let me curse them and burn up the world. Terrible it is to fall into dungeons, yet much worse to sleep, and sleep in sleep in freedom, to slumber for an eternity and leave not a footprint behind, all alike whether one lives or dies. Fate, where art thou? Fate, where art thou? There's none of any sort. Dost grudge me good fate, O God? Then give me bad as bad. End of section 27section twenty eight of the Kobzar of the ukraine this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the Kobzar of the ukraine by taras shevchenko translated by alexander jardine hunter him of exile the sun goes down behind the hill the shadows darken birds are still from fields no more come toilers voices in blissful rest the world rejoices with lifted hearts i gazing stand seek shady grove in ukraine's land uplifted thus mid memories fond my heart finds rest o'er the hills beyond on fields and woods the darkness falls from heaven blue a bright star calls and tears fall down o oh, evening star hast thou appeared in ukraine far in that fair land do sweet eyes seek thee dear eyes that once were wont to greet me have eyes forgotten their tryst to keep oh then in slumber let them sleep no longer o'er my fate to weep end of section twenty eight section twenty nine of the kobzar of the ukraine this is a librivox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Garfield D'Souza The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko Translated by Alexander Jardin Hunter Returning Home After a while, a new Caesar came to the throne, a man who was thought to have liberal tendencies. Shevchenko's friends at once busied themselves with efforts for his release. Finally, amnesty was granted. Count Tolstoy, on receiving the news late at night, hastened to waken his household, and there was a family jubilation. But the new autocrat, though somewhat benevolently inclined, was also a little bit suspicious. The banished poet was a pretty dangerous character. He had even disturbed the conscience of autocracy itself. Hence, he was only allowed to approach his home country by degrees. Finally, he was allowed to reside in Petrograd and later even in Ukraine, welcomed everywhere by loving and pitying friends. His wish for his old age was to inhabit a little cottage on the Nipers banks. For this purpose, he purchased a piece of land on one of those hills so often referred to in his poems. Death came too soon, however, but the property served as a site of his last resting place. He died at Petrograd, but in the spring his remains were carried the long distance to his old home. A moaning people lined the way. Only a couple of days after the poet's death appeared the ukase of the Tsar proclaiming the abolition of serfdom. To the common people, it seemed that their peasant poet 
by her songs and her sufferings had been the prime cause of their new freedom. No speeches were allowed at the interment on the hill about the Naipa, but there were many people and many wreaths of flowers. One wreath deposited by a lady expressed more than anything else the common feeling. That wreath was a crown of thorns. End of section 29「Section 30 of the Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. On the Eleventh Psalm. Merciful God. How few good folk remain on earth! Behold, each one in heart is setting snares for another, but with fine words and lips honey-sweet they kiss, and wait to see how soon their brother to his grave will find his way. But thou who art Lord alone shuttest up the evil lips, that great speaking tongue that says, No trifling thing are we, how glorious shall we show in intellect and speech! Who is that Lord that will forbid our thoughts and words? Yea, the Lord shall say to thee, I shall arise this day on their behalf. People of mine in chains, the poor and humble ones, these will I glorify. Little dumb and slaves are they, yet on guard about them will I set my word. Like trampled grass shall perish your thoughts and words alike. Like silver, hammered, beaten, seven times melted o'er the fire, are thy words, O Lord. Scatter these holy words of thine o'er all the earth, that thy children, little and poor, may believe in miracles on earth. End of section 30 Section 31 of the Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. Prayers. Prayer 1. To czars and kings who tax the world, send dollars and ducats and fetters well forged. To toiling heads and toiling hands, laboring on these stolen lands, endurance and strength. To me, my God, on this sad earth, give me but love, the heart's paradise, and nothing more. Prayer 2. My prayer for the czars, these traffickers in blood, that thou on them wouldst put fetters of iron in dungeons deep. My prayer for the peoples toiling long, do thou to them on their ravaged lands, send down thy strength, most merciful one, and for the pure in heart grant angel guards beside them to keep them pure. And for myself, O Lord, I ask not else but truth on earth to love, and one true friend to love me. Prayer 3. For those that have done wrong to me, no longer do I fetters ask, nor dungeons deep. For hands that faithful toil for good, send thy instructions gracious aid and holy strength. For tender ones, the pure in heart, do thou, O God, their virtue save with angels' guard. For all thy children on this earth, may they thy wisdom know alike in brother love. Prayer 4. To those of the ever-greedy eyes, gods of earth, the czars, are the ploughs and the ships and all good things of earth for these little gods. To toiling hands, to toiling brains, is given to plough the barren field, to think, to sow, and to take no rest, and reap the fields anon, such the reward of toiling hands. 
for the true-hearted lowly ones peace-loving saints o creator of heaven and earth give long life on earth and paradise beyond all good things of earth are for these gods the czars plows and ships all wealth of earth for us good lack is left to love our brothers End of section 31section thirty two of the Kobzar of the ukraine this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by phil schempf the Kobzar of the ukraine by taras shevchenko translated by alexander hardeen hunter mighty wind mighty wind mighty wind with the sea thou speakest waken it play with it question the blue sea it knows where my lover is far away it bore him it will tell the sea will tell what it has done with him if it has drowned my darling beat on the blue sea i go to seek my loved one and to drown my woe if i find him i'll cling to him on his heart i'll faint then waves bear me with him where'er the winds do blow if my lover is beyond the sea mighty wind thou knowest where he goes what he does with him thou speakest if he weeps then i shall weep if not i sing if my dark-haired one has perished i shall perish too then bear my soul away where my loved one is plant me as a red viburnum on his tomb better that an orphan lie in a stranger's field over him his sweetheart will bud and bloom as a blossom of viburnum over him i'll bloom that foreign sun may burn him not nor strangers trample on his tomb at even i'll grieve in the morning i'll weep the sun comes up my tears i'll dry and no one sees mighty wind mighty wind with the sea thou speakest waken it play on it question the blue sea end of section thirty two section thirty three of the Kobzar of the ukraine this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shevchenko Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter The Water Fairy Me my mother bore mid lofty palace walls, me at midnight hour, in Niper's flood she bathed, and bathing she murmured over little me, swim swim little maid adown the niper water you'll swim out a fairy next midnight my daughter i go dance to him my faithless lover you'll come and lure him into the river no more shall he laugh at me at my tears outflowing but o'er him the niper its blue water is rolling swim out my only one he will come to dance with thee waves waves little waves greet ye the water fairy sadly she cried and ran away as i floated down the stream but sister fairies met me i grew as in a dream a week and i dance at midnight and watch from the water pools what does my sinful mother lives she still in shameful pleasure with him the faithless lord thus the fairy whispered then like diving bird she dropped back in the stream and the willows bowed above her the mother comes to walk by the river side tis weary in the palace and the lord is not at home she comes to the bank thinks of her little one whom she plunged in with muttered charms what matters it she would go back to the palace but no hers is another fate she noticed not how the river maidens hastened till they caught her and tickled her mid laughter joyfully they caught her and played and tickled her and put her in a basket net 
unto her death and then they roared and laughed but one little fairy did not laugh end of section thirty three section thirty four of the Kobzar of the ukraine this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the Kobzar of the ukraine by taras shevchenko translated by alexander jardine hunter him of the nuns shevchenko had heard a story of nuns in a convent conveying messages to one another interspersed in the words of the religious service the messages were to the effect that company was coming that night and there would be music and dancing hence this sardonically humorous poem strike lightning above this house this house of god where we are dying where we think lightly of thee god and thinking lightly sing hallelujah were it not for thee we had loved men had courted and married brought up children taught them and sung hallelujah thou hast cheated us poor wretches and we defrauded and unlucky ourselves have fooled thee and howled and sung hallelujah with barber's shears has put us in this nunnery and we young women still we dance and sing and singing say hallelujah end of section thirty four section thirty five of the Kobzar of the ukraine this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the Kobzar of the ukraine by taras shevchenko translated by alexander jardine hunter to the goddess of fame hail thou barmaid slovenly staggering like fishwife drunkenly where the dickens dost thou stay with thy stock of halos pray was it on credit thou gavest one to the thief of versailles that corsican perhaps now thou'rt whispering in some fellow's ear and all because of boredom or beer come then a while with me to lodge fondly together trouble we'll dodge with a smack and a kiss this dreary weather let's make a bargain to live together thou'rt a painted queen with manners free yet in thy company i'd gladly be what though thou holdest thy nose in air dancest in bar-rooms with kings at a fair and most with that chap they call the czar still that's no bother thy stock's still at par come my dear make haste to me let me have a look at thee bestow on me a little smile neath thy bright wings i'd rest a while end of section thirty five section thirty six of the Kobzar of the ukraine this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the Kobzar of the ukraine by taras shevchenko translated by alexander jardine hunter iconoclasm bright light peaceful light 
free light light unbound what is this brother light in thy warm home thou art found by censers smoked by priest robes choked fettered and fooled and by icons ruled yield thee not in the fight waken up brother light shed thy pure rays on mankind's ways all priestly robes in rags we'll tear and light our pipes from censers rare with icons now the flames will roar with holy brooms we'll sweep the floor end of section thirty six Section 37 of the Kobzar of the Ukraine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Kobzar of the Ukraine by Taras Shavenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter. My Testament. When I die, remember, lay me lowly in the silent tomb where the prairie stretches free, sweet Ukraine, my cherished home. There, mid meadows, grassy sward, Dnieper's waters pouring, may be seen and may be heard, mighty in their roaring. When from Ukraine waters bear rolling to the sea, so far foeman's blood, no longer there stay I where my ashes are. Grass and hills I'll leave and fly, unto throne of God I'll go, there in heaven to pray on high, but till then, no god i know standing then about my grave make ye haste your fetters tear sprinkled with the foeman's blood then shall rise your freedom fair then shall spring a kinship great this a family new and free sometimes in your glorious state gently kindly speak of me end of section thirty seven end of the kobzar of the ukraine by tara Shavenko. Translated by Alexander Jardine Hunter.